I think sharing the gospel with people who are apathetic is often one of the hardest things to do. When people have big objections, if they're hostile to us, at least we've got some kind of conversation starter. But what about when people say, look, I just don't care? And to be honest, actually, for a lot of people in Britain, that is the case. and They just don't care. How do we share the gospel in that situation? I think one of the things I've discovered is although a lot of people don't think they care about the gospel, about God, about spiritual things, everybody cares about something. I've never yet met someone who doesn't care about anything. What we need to do is learn how to build bridges between what people do care about and the gospel and show how the gospel does connect with what they care about. Let me give you an example of that. I was speaking in Denmark at a university event recently. And after the event, I'd just spoken about the resurrection of Christ. I was asking a number of the students what they thought of the evening. Uh, There was a girl sitting on one of the tables. And when I asked her what she thought of the event, she just turned to me and she said, I'm not really bothered about all this God stuff. It doesn't interest me. That was a bit discouraging after explaining for over half an hour the importance of the resurrection of Christ, the very centre of our faith. So I wasn't sure how to respond at first. But after thinking for a moment, I said to her, well, what do you care about? What are you bothered about? She said to me, well, I'm bothered about love. That's what I care about. I said, well, that's great. But then I asked the next question, can you tell me what love is? And she thought for a moment and she said, um, and er, and after a while she said to me, I'm not sure. I told her that I wasn't trying to be clever. I wasn't trying to trick her. I just thought if she thought love was the most important thing, she might have a reason for why, a definition of it. But she admitted to the fact she couldn't explain what she thought love was. So she then asked me, what would you say love is? Now, this wasn't the point to explain the Christian definition quite yet. I said to her, hang on a minute, I'm assuming you don't believe in God. She said, no, of course not. So I said, well, let me give you a definition of love. Love is a chemical reaction that's evolved in our brains to make us attracted to people, normally the opposite sex, so that we reproduce and pass in our DNA. And she looked at me rather aghast, passively because her boyfriend was sitting next to her, and she said, that is not love. And I asked the second question, and it was simply this, why not? Why is love anything more than that? If we are just chemical reactions, if we are just material beings, if there is no God, why should we think that love is more than just a chemical reaction? And she had no answer to it. And then she asked the question, well, how would you explain what love really is? Now, at that point, I did have an opportunity to talk about my faith and I could talk about how actually we're created in the image of a God who is love. It's his very being. God is love. And out of love, he created us in his image. So one of the most fundamental things about being human is to love, to be loved by God, to love God, to love each other. And so actually starting with what she cared about, the topic of love, I could build a bridge to the very centre of the gospel, the God of love who's created us in his image. And so I think we want to do that Start where people are at and build a bridge. Francis Schaeffer talked about taking the roof off someone's position. What he meant was people live in their cosy house of their beliefs, but they've never really been exposed to the weather. They've never had those beliefs really questions. So ask questions, find out what people care about, get them to think about their own convictions, and then show that actually their worldview, their belief system doesn't really account for why those things are so important. And then as Christians, we can explain how the gospel really does account for and explain those things in a much fuller and better way because the gospel is true and it's real and it does make sense.